Welcome to today's EMN5. I want to talk about splinting basics for the ER and I'm going to split this EMN5 into two parts. This being the first part, we're going to talk about materials and the process of making the splint itself. First off, let's talk about the fact that a splint is not equal to a cast. Well, what are the differences? First off, it's temporary. It allows for edema, so you can see it's not circumferential, so there allows for some edema over the first week or two until a permanent cast can be placed. And lastly, it provides some stabilization for a fracture or suspected fracture until definitive treatment can be given by ortho, usually as an outpatient. So let's talk through the equipment and the different layers that you'll need to collect before you go to do a splint. First off is a stockinette, and that's the base layer that goes next to the skin to protect it. Next, you have the webrel. This provides the cushioning, especially important for pressure points. Next, you're going to use either plaster or fiberglass to actually create the hard part of the splint. And lastly, you're going to wrap that entire thing with ace wrap. You also need to make sure to have a pair of scissors available and a bucket of water. So let's go over the basics of creating the splint itself. Like I said, the stockinette's the first layer. It goes against the skin. Make sure that you measure it out ahead of time and that you allow for extra over both the more proximal and distal parts of the splint so you can fold it over later and make it look extra nice. Next, you can either wrap or layer the web rail. Like I said before, this is the cushioning of the splint. You should estimate that there's about five to six layers of that padding or web rail that you're placing underneath the fiberglass or plaster. Next, it's time to make the splint. So again, measure this out ahead of time. You can use the non-injured hand as a good area to get the correct length. For the fiberglass or plaster, you want about six to 12 layers, depending on the body part. So on a short arm cast or something that's not under a lot of tension, you could probably use more like six to eight layers. On something like the leg, you might want up to 12 layers. Once you've measured out your layers, you dip the fiberglass or plaster into warm water. I guess as a beginner, you can maybe start with cooler water because the warmer the water is, the faster it sets. That said, if you dip it into absolutely cold water, you're going to be sitting there forever holding your cast until it actually hardens. So after squeezing out the extra water, you mold it to the body part and hold it there nicely. And then you can also see here that they folded down the stockinette over the ends to make sure that there's no sharp parts sticking out that could scratch the patient. And next, use the ace wrap over the entire thing to hold the splint in place. Make sure that you're not really wrapping this very tight. The ace wrap itself creates quite a bit of pressure, so do it just tight enough to hold everything, but not so tight that you're losing circulation to the digits. And here, just to show you again, is a cast. So this is a circumferential all the way around. This would need to be cut off. We do not want to be making something that needs to be cut off. In the ER, we're just splinting, meaning it's that one strip. And then you use the ace wrap to go circumferentially to hold it in place. So again, just as a review, this is the equipment and layers that you need to collect. You need a stockinette to protect the skin, webrel for cushioning and to prevent skin breakdown over bony prominences. You need the actual splint itself, which you can either use fiberglass casting or plaster casting. And then you wrap the whole thing in an ace wrap. Make sure you grab a bucket of water and scissors. Thanks again for joining us on EMN5. And next week, look for the lecture on specific splints of the upper and lower extremities. Thanks for joining us on EMN5 and here are the references.